Hello everyone and welcome to a new series of uh, video recordings from the OPT uh, community. Today we are here with uh, Jose Antonio Gomez, uh, who is our uh, new co-chair of the Open Optical and Packet Transport Project Group of the Telecom Infra Project. Uh, welcome, Jose. Thank you. Thank you, Arturo. Thank you for, for joining us today. Uh, we would like to start by introducing you, so if you want to uh, give us a short um, summary of, of your background in telecommunications. Okay. Well, um, I started my journey in transport um, and providing technical support for the deployment of a, a new long-distance optical network. And like uh, one year later, I joined uh, Vodafone uh, to design and build uh, the optical network in, in Spain. From there, I moved to different roles in the in transport. I started working in international projects, and then in 2005, I joined the Vodafone Group organization uh, to work um, on, on technology strategy, innovation, network architecture, product and vendor management, technology sourcing, uh, providing support uh, to Vodafone and partner markets, etc. Always, always dealing with transport. In relation to the telecom infra project. Uh, I joined the initiative in, in 2019, starting with the disaggregated Thelsa gateways, and uh, have been involved in a number of other activities uh, since then, like uh, like testing and validation of solutions in community labs, developing disaggregated corresponders, collaborating in MAST uh, uh, that works on the on the SDN controllers and APIs, uh, etc. Well, it has been a long journey. By the way, yeah. <laughs> um, I missed to introduce myself. So um, Arturo Mayoral, I'm technical program manager at the Telecom Infra Project. Also, I've been um, working together with Jose Antonio for, for many years, as, as, as he has explained. I joined TIP uh, back in 2021. Uh, so it is already three years uh, participating and contributed to the uh, open optical and packet transport uh, community. So... Um, as I said, uh, we are here because uh, you have been nominated and approved as a new co-chair of the project group. So what, what has motivated you to step up uh, at this point in time uh, as a new co-chair? What's the, the challenges you observe in the, the community? Yeah, um, one of the areas we are uh, currently looking at in Vodafone, I'm pretty sure that um, many operators are doing the same. Is the transformation of the uh, transport network architecture with the advent of uh, a new high capacity coherent pluggable optics like the Zetar and Zetar Plus and their support in, in routers. One of the first requirements is the need uh, for full, full interoperability between different vendors, uh, transceivers, and the commercial routers in a, in a kind of uh, you know, plug and play fashion, right? The second and even more complex is how to do the multi layer management uh, of the IP and optical transport for especially for long distance applications there are there are several uh, challenges in this uh, transformation like the integration of uh, diverse equipment into a cohesive uh, system additionally the lack of common management apis is not making things uh, simpler it's a challenge it's making it harder to manage and automate uh, network operations efficiently so these challenges uh, motivated me uh, uh, to step up as a co-chair because I believe uh, we need a, a concerted uh, joint effort to support the development of open management interfaces, promoting interoperability. Um, by addressing these aspects, uh, we can drive innovation and ensure that optical transport networks can evolve to meet uh, the growing demands of the of the telcos. Absolutely. Um... But you know that uh, in, in the OOPT community, we have active uh, six uh, subgroups and um, we, we have uh, distributed uh, workloads over these subgroups, uh, ranging from the development of uh, technical requ requirements documents um, and specifications and test plans for disaggregated open routers, also for optical systems. And um, from the management perspective, the MAST subgroup, it's a mandatory use cases for SDN yeah. transport, is active on uh, defining the target architecture with, based on standard and open APIs for the management of, of, of the whole transport networks in a multi-layer fashion, as you were mentioning. Yeah. Uh, last but not least, uh, the MANTRA subgroup, which is... Um, uh, newly created a couple of years ago, has been started to look at the IP of the DWDM um, transport architecture 
with uh, some uh, recent uh, white papers that has been uh, putting together no, the view of the of the um, different uh, operators around OOPT about this uh, new uh, architecture. Um, so I think that I started already explaining more or less what's uh, the, the ecosystem there, but if you can develop it further, what do you observe within the community that is the activities that has been uh, ongoing uh, to, to face these challenges that you have detected, uh, it could be nice for the audience to know. Yeah, uh, as you said, I mean, there are there are several um, initiatives ongoing in the OPT across the, the six different subgroups uh, within the project. Uh, on one side, I mean, I would highlight, let's say that uh, on one side, if we consider the optical transport landscape over the last year, the focus shifted towards uh, the, the, the use of uh, coherent pluggables, the coherent pluggable market, as I have previously mentioned. In this regard, the Mantra subgroup uh, uh, is currently completing the report of the results of a multi-vendor proof of concept, <clears throat> where we have assessed the interoperability based on standard interfaces uh, between the routers and the coherent pluggables. We have done this, um, this POC with a disaggregated router solution for IP infusion uh, for the software and a UV space for the hardware and with Setar Plus pluggables from Siena and, and NEC. It was a fantastic opportunity to analyze the feasibility of operators' use cases in a full standard multi-vendor solution. I mean, always the, the POCs are, are a good opportunity and, and um, uh, for this, for this uh, kind of assessment. Additionally, operators are supporting the development of um, you know, fully open and desegregated options uh, for this type of solution. And the industry is collaborating on a set of uh, reference technical requirements uh, to help achieve this. So this project is, uh, is, is taking place in, in, in the MAST uh, subgroup that has demonstrated a long uh, experience developing uh, an open strategy uh, in transport SDN by assessing and contributing to the improvement of, uh, of open standards and data models developing operators use cases in a progressive manner. Another relevant action has been the collaboration between MAST and the PSC subgroup, uh, Physical Simulation Environment, uh, also part of, uh, of Open Optical and Packaging Transport, to define an open optical planning uh, solution. Operators uh, have come together with the idea that open transport requires uh, vendor agnostic and open tools to perform optical planning. <clears throat> and in this regard, we have the GMPI, <clears throat> which is the first open source library of this kind, of its kind, that can compute optical physical impairments over multi-vendor simulator networks, has been included uh, with, uh, within the reference architecture of the target agnostic planning module. And the aim is to promote an open ecosystem of vendors providing this kind of, um, uh, of modules based on open APIs. So this, uh, this is a, a brief overview of uh, the actions, uh, some of the actions that we are taking there. Yeah, I was I was forgetting about the physical simulation environment subgroup, very important um, and relevant activity within within OPT. So, um, what do you observe about the community? What's uh, the benefits that you observe as an operator to to participate in this type of projects? Well, I would say that um, one of the main benefits uh, of uh, or uh, this is my experience at least. Uh, one of the main benefits of an open community like this has been the, the collaborative environment. Uh, it provides an open forum where we can uh, share knowledge and, uh, and have open discussions between the members of the community. Um, this exchange of ideas and experiences allows us to produce, um, I don't know, reference de uh, definitions for targeted products and meeting the needs of multiple customers or multiple operators, let's say. Um, this leads to the development of solutions that are not only innovative, but also practical uh, pragmatic and widely applicable across different networks uh, and, and use cases. Great. Um, in my view, I think that um, it, it also helped to accelerate, right? Because at yeah. the end, um, I think that the capacity of what a single operator in order to work on so many topics uh, is, is limited, while uh, a community-led effort is always bringing uh, the capacity of extend and accelerate those, those, those topics, no? Yeah. Um, well, I think that it's time to talk about Fuse, uh, so as uh, maybe the 
the attendees to this uh, webinar knows FUSE is uh, the annual event um, organized by the Telecom Infra Project. This mm -hmm. time is going to happen in Dublin in between the uh, 9th to the 11th of, sorry, 11th to 13th of uh, November. And well, what do you expect to see in FUSE this year? What's the, um, the big uh, announcements, the big topics that do you think that it will come out there? Yeah, we are we are looking to um, we are looking forward to several key developments um, and progress from the various in initiatives from the different initiatives, including the conclusions of the mantra POC I mentioned, the presentation of the new OPT use cases um, that I also mentioned, and the la latest results of the ongoing test and validation activities. Um, at the content level, the expectation is to discuss as well um, how AI might impact uh, the management layer of the different network segments. Uh, I mean, how, how AI can transform uh, uh, our networks in the, in the coming years, right? Mm -hmm. And then uh, moreover, it's, um, it's always a great place uh, to get together with the members of the community and to share and learn about each other, right? It's a fantastic opportunity to have uh, uh, discussions between us, right? I'm looking forward definitely to meet uh, the colleagues in the, in the event. We already have a, a very a good agenda um, confirmed in the in the website, so you can go and and look at the details, and you will see all all the speakers confirmed as well. Uh, we're looking forward to see you, uh, Jose Antonio, and uh, together with the rest of the the colleagues in in OPT. We know that the participation will be high, so uh, recommend all of you to join the the event. This opportunity is going to be uh, rewarding for all of you, and you will have the opportunity to meet. Uh, many relevant industrial players in this in this area. Um, I think that we can conclude here, Jose Antonio. I want to thank you very much for your time on uh, joining us in this, in this webinar today. And we will continue uh, working on the activities within TIP and I uh, hope to see you face to face in Fuse uh, very soon. Yeah, thank you, thank you very much, Arturo. Thank you. Bye bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you.